for Dr. Manapat, sure. Uh, do we have uh, preferred anticoagulation or what anticoagulants can we use for those patients with heparin-induced thrombocytopenia that would undergo cardiopulmonary bypass? There is no locally available alternative to heparin. And in fact, uh, it, it happened uh, one time uh, in my case. The problem was not uh, HIP, but heparin resistance, which was not responsive to uh, transfusion of plasma. And we could not find uh, an alternative uh, for uh, heparin. For non uh, cardiopulmonary bypass anticoagulation, uh, pondoparin is available or uh, other uh, indications of, of anticoagulation. Oh, thank you, sir. What could be done if you are already ongoing surgery and the patient is heparin resistant? Heparin resistant, what do we do with uh, those set of patients? Well, uh, what we, as uh, mentioned by uh, JR earlier, we give uh, fresh frozen plasma to, uh, because it's probably a deficiency of uh, antithrombin. And so we just keep giving uh, FFP until the uh, uh, ACP goes up. So sometimes immunoglobulin can be given in those patients who are diagnosed pre op But it's really a problem uh, if the uh, ACP uh, doesn't uh, go up to the uh, therapeutic level because we, have, we don't have a choice. We cannot put the patient on bypass unless we uh, achieve the desired uh, ACP. Thank you, sir, for that uh, answer. Cardiopulmonary bypass and open heart surgery is done in a very organized and timely manner. Uh, there is a sequence on how we do it and what to do first and what to do next. Uh, this is a question for Dr. Manapat and Mr. Pang. Are there instances wherein you had to do emergency cannulation? And how did you prepare for it and what is being done with it? Well, uh, if uh, all uh, available uh, su supplies are present, then uh, maybe what you can do is uh, do a femoral uh, artery and vein cannulation using uh, percutaneous uh, methods no? because there are now cannulas that can be inserted uh, percutaneously you know, using the cell injector technique. I think that would be the fastest way. Other than that, uh, uh, if you don't have uh, a choice, then you just have to open the chest uh, very quickly and then cannulate the, uh, the aorta. When, with regards to emergency situation, uh, bigger centers usually uh, have uh, spare circuits that is already primed for emergency uses. But for smaller centers that do not that do not have many cases, uh, usually the it, uh, two perfusions are required to have a faster way of circulating the bypass uh, circuit signs. Thank you, Mr. Pang. This question is for Dr. Manapat. Sir, what are, uh, are uh, there are different types of prosthesis for valve surgeries. Uh, are the prosthesis valves replaced through time? They might need to be replaced, especially for the uh, tissue valves or bioprosthetic valves, because uh, there is a uh, uh, lifespan for these valves because of the wear and tear. And that's why we usually reserve this for uh, elderly uh, patients because you have to gauge the uh, remaining lifespan of the patient. Is this valve going to be good enough for the rest of their lives? And if not, maybe they're better off with a mechanical valve. You know? But uh, for example, in the case of, uh, there, there are instances where we put in tissue valves for younger patients as well. For example, females desiring uh, to have uh, children or have pregnancies because the uh, uh, anticoagulant warfarin uh, is uh, not uh, is detrimental to the fetus during the first trimester. So for these patients, even though they're young, uh, 
if, if it's their choice, we can put in a tissue valve. But for the aortic position nowadays, no, if you put in a, uh, a uh, bioprosthetic valve, because there is now a uh, uh, new technology, the TAVR, which can be done uh, to uh, implant a uh, aortic valve prosthesis uh, percutaneously or, or through a femoral, a small femoral incision. So in that case, um, the patient may not need a reoperation in the future. They can just put in a uh, TAVR without removing the uh, existing tissue valve. Thank you, sir. That's good. We have the advent of new technologies arising now. Uh, in, the, in line with that question, Dr. Manapat, uh, is there a limit on how many times a patient can undergo cardiac surgery? There's actually no uh, stated limit. But you must remember that a re-operation or what we call a redo operation is always more difficult than the first no? because this is not a virgin area anymore. So you have a lot of adhesions. The heart can get stuck to the uh, breastbone, the sternum, so that uh, just during the opening of the chest, you can already injure the heart. No? Or if it's a bypass, you can injure, for example, a patent uh, lima, anastomosis of the LAD. And that can be catastrophic. So uh, you have to be careful in doing a reoperation. So there's no limit, but a uh, redo is always more difficult. It takes longer because you have to dissect the heart uh, away from the, the tissues. So more, more dissection, more risk of bleeding because there are more raw surfaces. And so the risk is at least twice that of a uh, first operation. With each succeeding uh, reoperation, then uh, you multiply the risk. You know? So. So a third operation will be uh, uh, riskier than a second operation. Thank you, sir. So it can be done, but with a higher risk and, of course, a higher cost. It can also cost your life. So next question is for Mr. Pang. Sir Pang, we know that among the consequences of blood uh, in contact with the extracorporeal membrane of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit, there is a subsequent release of pro-inflammatory pro cytokines that can lead to multiple organ compromise. So on the perfectionist end, how do you handle this? Or do we give additional medications to counter its unwanted effects of this release of the pro-inflammatory cytokines? Oh, oh yes. Uh, nowadays, usually we, we use uh, a bio-coated tubings which reduce the contact of the platelets and the coagulation factors, which promotes inflammatory response. So I think that's, that's one of the uh, newer technologies that, that we are using right now to, to reduce the inflammatory response by the patient. Uh, obviously, there's no avail availability of the bio-coated tubings. In my practice, I usually give albumin because the albumin is going to coat the inner lines of the tubings, which also reduce the platelet and coagulation factors activation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pang. Thank you.